Okay. So you, you can't, uh, can't hear me? Okay, cool, cool. Alright. <laughs> well, uh, hello everyone. Um, this is Major. I'm uh, going to be doing a little crafting with you today. Um, if you have gotten some materials and want to uh, uh, go along with me, I'll uh, be happy to hear about that in the chat, see how people are doing. Um, real quick, uh, how is the music? Is it too loud? Can I turn it, turn it down a little? Well, if it's good, we can, we can go. Okay, cool. All right. Now, all right. Well, and if anybody, uh, if there's any troubles with the, the music, just let me know. A little new to streaming. Haven't done a whole lot of that, so I'm, uh, I'm learning here. Uh, but that's exactly what today is all about. Today is about learning um, a, either a new skill or new techniques or new, uh, uh, new ways to do things. All right. Um, yeah. So the first thing, uh, obviously don't have my camera on because it is over on my workstation. The first thing we're going to talk about is actually uh, a little little trick, a little, uh, little thing that's uh, really useful to know how to do when you come into, uh, into crafting, especially if you're using patterns that you don't make yourself. Um, it's really, really nice to be able to make your own patterns and things like that, but a lot of times uh, there are assets and things that you can find online that are just as good, if not, you know, sometimes even better than what you could do uh, yourself with the tools that you have available. But often those those patterns that you find may not be sized for you. They might be um, uh, put together for someone else. So we're gonna uh, start off today. Um, let me quickly just undo so. Okay. Uh, we're going to start off today by talking about how to resize a pattern. Uh, is this supported to be online only? Uh, audio only? I don't know what that. I don't know what that means. Uh, but uh, get the screen capture pulled up. So we can see. There we go. So in the uh, in the opening ceremonies and everything, I talked about this pattern that we'll be using. Uh, this is uh, courtesy of Minke or Mink. I'm not I'm honestly not certain how to uh, pronounce that, uh, but uh, this pattern uh, is actually made as a, or it's intended originally as a piece for a um, uh, piece of shoulder armor. And I can pull up the, the PDF copy of it as well, so you can see that. Uh, this is what was in the QR code on uh, the little ad that we ran. Um, but uh, this is what we'll be using as a base. But it was actually intended, like I said, as a piece of shoulder armor. So it's not as big as it needs to be for a full head base. Uh, it is uh, adaptable. It's meant to be able to be increased in size so that you can uh, you know, make it into a, a full mask. But uh, it, uh, the original size is a bit too small uh, unless you have a, you know, it might fit a kid. <laughs> But uh, to do that, to, uh, uh, to, and honestly, this would be a good prototyping size. So if you wanted to try it out first to get the feel of how it would all fit together, uh, especially if you wanted to use like um, less expensive materials, you could easily do this with uh, cardstock or um, like a really thin EVA foam, even like the craft sheets you find at, um, at uh, Walmart. Uh, for you can get a hundred of those for like five bucks, um, and uh, I will try to keep my eye on the um, on the Twitch uh, comments. So if anybody has any questions, please uh, please ask. But um, uh, actually, let me go ahead and pull uh, the Twitch up in this other screen here, so we can we can watch the comments there. Okay. But uh, this, uh, this would be a good size for prototyping if you wanted to try it out before you actually did it. Um, so to print a, um, I'm using a Foxit Reader. It's a free PDF viewer uh, that, uh, that works pretty well. Uh, plus, uh, you know, Fox. <laughs> but uh, to print this out, if you try to print it off on just a single sheet of, uh, of eight and a half by 11, it's gonna be a little bit the wrong size. So this, uh, you can either take this image into a uh, image editor 
and resize it, like cut out some of these white, uh, white margins and it'll be just fine. Or you can go to uh, the print tab, uh, which see if it should open the, no, I should show that uh, button. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not. Hmm. Uh, Oh, anyway, um, actually, let me switch my capture to the window really quickly, so you can see what I'm see what I'm looking at. Screen capture. <laughs> that's, that's what I need. There we go. There we go. That's better. All right. So within the uh, the full screen, you can see uh, you go to the print options within Foxit. You can see that the document is uh, 11.7 by uh, 8.3 inches in landscape. So it's a bit too wide to print on a normal piece of uh, printer paper. Um, You'd have a couple of options there. Um, if you wanted to print off a pattern on one piece of paper, so it's easier to mess with, uh, easier to cut out, easier to, uh, to work with, uh, but it's too big for your home printer, uh, you can go to a Staples, uh, Staples the one that doesn't exist anymore, an office store, <laughs> any kind of print store, and ask for them to print it off as a blueprint on plotter paper. It's really inexpensive. Um, you can usually even just like insert your files and everything from home on the internet and just uh, set it to the right store and they'll print it out. Um, a couple bucks for, uh, for a full size print. Uh, that way you can get it all on one piece of paper so when you go to transfer it or uh, uh, cut it out to use on your, um, on your phone, it's a lot easier. Uh, but if you wanted just to do and you know, do it on printer paper, that's totally fine. We just want to go to Tile Large Pages. In this case, it's a little bit overkill because it only overlaps a little bit there. Probably better just to uh, you know, take this file in and reduce some of those margins so it fits on a regular sheet. But um, uh, if this was bigger, you could go to that uh, Tile Large Pages and it will automatically uh, bring it in so that it will fit on multiple pieces of paper. Now when it prints, it'll print with uh, cut marks, if you have that selected. So you just have to you know, take a ruler, line up those lines, and then cut those margins and just fit those together. Uh, pretty easy. Uh, but if we want to make this into a full, uh, a full head base, we're going to need to do a little bit of editing. Um, so what we can do is, um, using another free program. Uh, this one is called uh, Inkscape. Uh, back to the Twitch, there we go. Uh, so this one's called Inkscape. Uh, basically what this is, it's a vector, uh, vector editor, uh, kind of similar to something like um, Adobe, but free, because Adobe is expensive. <laughs> Subscriptions, yeah. But uh, what you can do with this, uh, you can load in your pattern. Now, when you load in a PDF in Inkscape, it's going to want to, it'll ask you to uh, select which page you want to uh, load in. So you have to load in both separately and then just add them together. Uh, to do that, you just you know, load in uh, one window uh, for page one and then have a second, uh, second Inkscape or just uh, hit file, uh, new, and, and uh, select the PDF again and then just click the second page on that one and then you just put them together now uh, I, I like to put them all together because it makes it a little easier to transfer it back to uh, a print file uh, also if you need to resize things that way you can uh, select everything at once and you don't have to worry about something not proportionally resizing but what I have here I have the uh, the PDF of that uh, that pattern pulled into Inkscape and um, we need to find out how big we need to make this in order for it to fit our head. And one, one quick like major caveat to this, don't fully expect this first go to be perfect. That's, you know, if uh, anything in crafting, if you've you know, just started crafting or if you've been crafting forever, your first draft is just that, it's a draft. Uh, 
it might come out really well. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they, you just nail it on the first try. Very rarely, I'll say. Uh, a lot of times, uh, the first the first try, it needs some work. It needs uh, a little extra, uh, a little extra love, a little extra tweaking to get it the way you want it. Uh, but uh, what we can do just to set ourselves up as best as we can is go ahead and uh, find out. We uh, want to take a a known dimension, something that we can reference on our own head and then apply that across this entire pattern. Then when we have everything set up and in like a, a full prototype, uh, we can you know, see, hey, does this need to be a little bit bigger and you know, increase, increase that way? Or if it's a little too big, we can you know, bring it back down. Uh, that's where prototyping is really good for something like this. Uh, we'll be working today with, uh, with the EVA foam um, but uh, if you needed, if you wanted to do a prototype out of cardstock, uh, be a little, you know, attaching them's a little different, obviously. But um, you see, uh, but um, cardstock, cardboard, it's all pretty easy, all pretty good stuff to do. But anyway, so what we need to do is find out how big we need to make this. So currently, this is at its normal size through the PDF, which we know is not sized for a person's head. Um, so we want to take a piece, or in this case pieces, that we know what, what, uh, what relation they'll have to our own head, uh, take a measurement really quickly, and then go from there. So what, I, what I've done is I've taken these two pieces. I have the back of the head piece here, and uh, the um, the other piece here, the, uh, those two back of the head pieces, um, and looking at how they attach. So many of these, uh, most of these patterns, at least the good ones, they'll tell you which sides go to which. So uh, we see that you have the nines, 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 nines. So we know that that will go uh, to the uh, the part here on the forehead. Uh, so that's just you know making up the kind of the dome of your head. Uh, then 8B, 8A, they attach together there. Uh, so this line here along the top will actually be the bottom of your head. Uh, so what we need to do is find out how long this line is and find out how long, basically the back of your head from ear to ear roughly, how long that is. Uh, easiest way to do that uh, on your own head is with a measuring tape uh, like you get for uh, measuring um, fabric or in a pinch uh, like a, a regular measuring tape would work. I wouldn't suggest it though it's too rigid uh, but if you if that's all you had to work with yeah you know. in fact honestly I think at that point I'd probably just print off a ruler on a piece of paper and use that uh, instead but uh, a fabric measuring tape is going to be perfect for this. Just measure the back of your head from uh, the pieces that we know, so around the uh, ear to ear. For me, I got about nine inches. So I'm gonna want to make the back of my head piece about nine inches across. Uh, I'm gonna wanna add in a little extra space because when you uh, cut and glue and put everything together, it's gonna wanna kinda shrink a little bit. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna assume that nine becomes nine and a half to 10. This is again where you might find once you once you prototype it, that's really just not quite as much as you'd hoped. And you might have to go back and uh, bump that out to 10 inches, 10 and a half. But it's trial and error. Once you get it the first time though, you'll know better about the next time. So to find out how long this is currently, in Inkscape we're gonna use this ruler tool here. And we're just gonna click on uh, the end of this node. So, uh, it, when you load in a PDF document, especially one that's been created with vector software, uh, it will snap to the the edges, uh, snap to like the the apex uh, on that. If it's not a vector uh, file, it's all right. It's not going to cause any problems. You just have to kind of zoom in, find the corner where you want it, and uh, you know put it there. Uh, now. It's not going to let me, or at least if there's a way to do it, I, I haven't been able to figure it out. Uh, but I uh, can't quite get it to give me the full length of this measurement along the line uh, as, it, as it exists there. Uh, but that's all right, because when we measure the back of our head, we measure a straight line anyway. 
So we just need to know what it is from this point to this point. So I'll take, uh, take my measurement here and click shift or control rather. Oh, no, sorry, it's just click and drag. <laughs> All right, so with that, I get 3.14. <laughs> I guess a little late pie day deal. Oh, I see a comment in there. Uh, this is not actually a, um, this is a free, um, this is a free pattern. Um, it's on, um, here, I can drop the link. One second. Have it pulled up. Here we go. I'll drop the link in the chat. But this is actually a free, free to use pattern. Um, there are a lot of free software, uh, free patterns out there. Uh, I for especially for e, uh, EVA foam, I really like uh, Bill Duran's um, stuff off of Punish Props. He's got a lot of free pro, uh, free prints. Uh, well, he does free prints for 3D printing, but also like free, uh, free plans for EVA. Um, he also has a ton of great. Uh, tutorial guides on his website um, on his uh, YouTube um, there also is um, another good another really good one is uh, SKS props and um, uh, evil Ted evil Ted Smith they have a lot of free props uh, a lot of free plans um, they have some you know paid stuff obviously also but um, yeah a lot of free or low-cost plans to to use and they can all be pretty readily adaptable so anyway, uh, I found out that our length here is about 3.14 inches. And when I measured the back of my head, uh, that came out to about uh, about nine inches. But I wanna make it a little bit bigger. So what I need to do is find out how much I need to, uh, how much I need to increase the size of this. So if I know that this half of it is about three and a, um, uh, I guess that's three and an eight, or uh, 3.14. <laughs> And then I know that this side over here is going to be the same. So my total um, my total length across the back of the head is just about uh, six and a quarter, um, six and a quarter inches. A little less, but um, not, not not too much. So I need to take this and make my pattern about 150 percent the current size. So I need to make it uh, about half again as big as it is. Actually, I'm going to zoom out so it makes that easier so what I need to do is now go back and select everything they just kind of you know, swipe it uh, and I'm gonna go up here to my resize tool on the toolbar uh, make sure it's set for percentage and make sure that the height and uh, height and width are locked uh, we want to make sure that they're both in proportion so I'm just gonna take that I'm just gonna type in 150 percent and boom it resizes everything to 150 percent from there, we can you know, check and make sure that we're still in the right ballpark. Zoom back in and bring that out there. Uh, about 4.71. So if we uh, you know, multiply that out, we get about what, what we were talking about. Like, uh, uh, I'm bad at math. Uh, 4.71 times 2. 9.42, so about, uh, we're at a, just short of nine and a half inches, which I think is good. We could play around with it a little bit more and you know boost that up to maybe like 155%, 160%. Uh, but uh, I think for right now, we're good on that. But you notice when we resized, everything resized in proportion. So everything that was based off of this length should now be more, uh, more apt to our, our own head. But you also notice that the canvas didn't resize with it. So what we need to do is go back up here to File and Document Properties, which again has got a pop-up that's not showing. So let me turn on where that's where I need to learn a little bit better about how to <laughs> how to stream. <laughs> anyway, so if I go to my uh, screen capture, you can see that pop-up that came up. Uh, within the document properties, you can go to page, and then down here, uh, this will all be kind of blanked out, but um, we'll want to go to custom size, and we'll want to uh, change the size of our uh, our canvas. So the easiest way to do that is just to hit resize to, um, uh, resize to content, and just hit resize to content. 
Then when we exit back out of here, our canvas is now the right size. So, easiest thing to do from this point is to take this and export it as another another PDF. Uh, just uh, save as. Uh, Uh, EVA foam template resized uh, and we can resize it I like to save them as PDFs uh, for printing makes it a little easy and um, yeah, BPI it's, we're not talking about like a very detailed piece of art here so we're, it's fine uh, hit OK and then uh, we can Back over here, get rid of this one's our old one now. And um I'm gonna open Okay, let me just just in case. <laughs> um, remember where I put it. There's, there's my resize template. There we go. All right, so I'll pop that back up. Go big. All right, so now we have our resize template um, that should better fit our head. And it's all in one now. That makes it a little nice. Uh, and we're going to go to File, uh, Print, and Tile Large Pages. So you notice that it, this time, uh, popped it over six pages. We can auto center it so that it's a little easier to deal with, um, or you can leave it in the corner. That's that's personal preference. Uh, but I'm gonna center it. Uh, I like to when I'm printing these off. I like to print them on cardstock. Uh, just makes it a little easier to work with when you're uh, putting the patterns back together and when you're you know, using them to transfer to uh, your workspace. Uh, but uh, and then from there we just hit print. Now, if you have a, um, a device like a, uh, a Cricut, um, you can also take these and copy up uh, and make them into an image. Um, it's not going to... Actually, it probably would. Um, yeah, you, can save, you can save these files as, like, uh, as an SVG or uh, whatever. Just take off some of these little little things that overhang, so it doesn't uh, doesn't screw up your cut if you're using a a, a cutter. But otherwise, it should be should be pretty good there. Uh, one other thing to note on this particular uh, this particular uh, piece, if we go back to our original PDF, which I shouldn't have closed that out already, so let me go back to this guy. Uh, so our original PDF, there was a guide down. Here. Um, it's set up for 5mm EVA foam. A lot of EVA is made in 6mm. It's fine. There's no, uh, it, it's, there really wouldn't be any difference there. Um, the 5 or 6, no matter. Um, if you look here, it has a bevel indicator. So these red lines, uh, it wants you to bevel them, which means that it wants you to cut at an angle along those lines. Usually but, yeah, about a 45 degree angle. Sometimes you can kind of yeah, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that when we actually get to, to cutting. Um, given the time that we have, uh, probably not going to get through everything today. I think it might have been a little ambitious with, uh, <laughs> with this project. But we can at least get a, a good start on it. And um, if you want to continue on your own, um, or I might, uh, might try to jump back on Twitch sometime and finish this. But... Um, yeah, I saw uh, a comment um, 
Yeah, you could totally re uh, and redo this for a, a circle or a protogen uh, pretty easily, honestly. Um, and there's there's a couple of things here that if we go back to if we go back to the picture from the where is it? Here we go. If we go back to the picture from the original piece. You notice that the eyes are really small. So if you wanted to do kind of like a mannequin eye where it's you know really thin, um, you know, obviously really poor vision. Uh, but you know you, you could you could leave it like that and just have that that small like cute eye, or you just uh, leave out the 4A piece here. Uh, if you don't have that piece, then it's not gonna make the structure weaker or anything like that. It's be fine. Uh, but that'll give you more of an eye to put in. You can always do the normal thing with uh, with buckram behind it to uh, put in some smiles there. Uh, if you really wanted to uh, you know, go with some custom eye, uh, like some 3D printed eye blanks or something like that, do uh, follow me eyes, something like that. You could just either leave out this whole section there and uh, put in those those blanks, or probably what I would recommend is like you know, make it as it is here then measure out your eye blanks, and then just use a sharp knife to cut those those bits out. Now, have to be kind of careful, but it'd be fine. That's one thing uh, that I love with working with uh, with these patterns, with the uh, EVA foam and, and other, other things like it. It's all customizable. It's all uh, adaptable. You can do what you want to do with it. It's easy to make, make changes to make it your own. All right. So uh, I've got my patterns uh, printed out. Uh, we'll uh, see if we can't throw those together, uh, at least a couple pieces, so we can demonstrate how to um, how to glue these things up. Um, bear with me for one second while I get switched over to my uh, my workstation. All right, not the. <laughs> have to forgive the messy room a little bit. <laughs> but uh, one second, I'll be right back. All right, uh, okay, I think I got it fixed. I don't know, I was working perfectly earlier and then it stopped. Uh, can you, uh, somebody in the chat, let me know if you can hear me still?
Hi. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it was one of those things. Never easy, right? Um, but anyway. Got my patterns here. I printed them off on cardstock so they'd be a little bit easier to uh, to work with. Um, there's that, and this is just some regular paper. Oh, real quick, one thing. All right, so just to kind of illustrate a little bit, uh, this is kind of the idea that we'll be going for. Uh, sometimes it's harder to uh, you know, think about putting flat things into a, a circle shape, uh, but with EVA foam, the nice thing about it is it's very elastic. It's extremely, uh, uh, extremely stretchy, um, so you can uh, mold them, especially with heat. Now, heat is a key. Uh, to this, but you can mold it into the right shape, and then once it's there, uh, it actually becomes fairly rigid. So this is uh, this helmet here is something I made entirely out of EVA foam. This is all uh, it's a thicker one that we'll be using today. This is a uh, 10 millimeter, but uh, it's got some some good heft to it. Anyway. All right. So what we're gonna do. Just to kind of demonstrate a few uh, a few techniques here, um, so we don't have uh, enough time probably to get everything. <laughs> yeah, we definitely don't have enough time to get everything done, uh, but that's all right. Uh, how about we put the jaw pieces together? That make it uh, make it good. That make a good kind of uh, test on this. So. I'm going to set these parts of my pattern aside for right now, and I am going to just get to cutting. Um, I like to use, when I'm cutting these uh, these patterns out, um, oh, that's flipped. Let me rotate my camera really quickly. Didn't think about that. There we go. All right. I'll try to keep it as um, as in there as possible. It's not not uh, focusing as well as I'd hope <laughs> hope for, but that'll be all right. Now, um, anyway, I just like to use a uh, you know just a, a little utility knife to cut these out. Uh, I like these retractable knives, the snap off ones, uh, instead of like a a longer bladed. Um, or even an X-Acto knife. Uh, X-Acto knives are great, but working with things like EVA, uh, even this paper, will dull them up really quickly. I like to, especially when we get to the foam itself, I keep a little Kershaw sharpener uh, around. Uh, these things are pretty cheap. They don't need any oil or water or anything like that. Uh, just screw that on there, and then you can use that to give you yourself a quick edge. Obviously with paper it's not that big of a deal, but uh, when we get to the actual foam, uh, it'll be a, a bigger bigger thing. Uh, but I'll take a, a ruler for my straight edges and just uh, do the trim. Now you want to be careful, but Honestly, if you make a mistake when you're cutting out your pattern, it's not the end of the world. You don't need to go back and, you know, reprint it or anything like that. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, and that's the beautiful thing. It doesn't need to be. Because when you try to go and put this onto foam, that's not going to be perfect. Unless you have, like, a laser cutter or something like that. Then it'd be perfect. <laughs> but I don't. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to trace this line here with the knife. Yeah, we're just going to pick it up, reposition. Just going to get around. You can do this with scissors, but I prefer to use uh, the, the, you know, the craft blade. Uh, I just think it gives you a little bit more control over it. 
Uh, once you kind of get in the swing of things, I think it's a little faster than Sinister 2. There we go. There's our first piece. Um, and it's a good idea to uh, label everything. So you can see this one, I'm going to turn it the right way and it'll help. Uh, labeled, it'll, not really focusing too well, but uh, labeled uh, right lower jaw. So uh, make sure you have your labels on there. If you, if it doesn't come with labels on the, uh, uh, in the uh, pattern, good thing to write on there. And then also when you cut out your pieces from the foam, make sure you label those too. Nothing worse than forgetting which piece goes where. Uh, but I'm also going to go and cut out our second piece. And we're just going to do a couple of these, like I said, so that we can get something, something ready today. See there, I didn't quite follow that line right, but I'm not going to worry about it. I might have shaved off a millimeter or so, uh, but when we go to stick it all together, it's not going to matter. One thing you can also do, and you know, I'd recommend if you have, especially if you have the tools and the time, uh, when you get the pieces cut, I like to go back with a Dremel or other, you know, rotary sander, and just clean up those edges a little bit. If you want to get really fancy, especially with bigger pieces, and that's really helpful on that helmet, uh, you can use a belt sander, uh, which, uh, oh. Oh. something like this. <laughs> Uh, but you can use a belt sander to, you know, quickly uh, level out those uh, those pieces, especially if they didn't quite get perfectly cut the first time, which they're not going to be. Uh, but uh, this is nice, but it will take off a lot of material all at once, so you got to be careful with it. Uh, not super expensive, though. It's just from Harbor Freight. Anyway. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside. We don't need that page anymore. And I'm gonna really quickly you know, cut out this one over here. Let me bring up the chat, and while I'm, while I'm uh, cutting this piece out, uh, if anybody has any questions, or if anybody is out there watching and has projects of your own um, that you're working on, whether you're working on them right now, or just uh, something that's in the back burner, uh, why don't we, uh, chat for a minute. Uh, not good at, as good at the ASMR thing as, uh, as Max, but uh, <laughs> we can try to have a nice little chill time. We have about, uh, about half an hour left together. A little, a little under that. Should be enough time to get these pieces transferred over to foam and then cut out and glued up. As far as uh, different tools and things that would be good to have, uh, there are a couple. Uh, there are a couple that uh, are necessary, like you know, sharp utility knives, um, X-Acto blades for really finicky little details. Uh, I also like to keep around a bigger uh, utility knife like this guy for larger pieces. Uh, straight edges like uh, rulers. Also, somewhere <laughs> have a, a clear ruler with a metal edge that uh, is really nice for using on, on patterns and things so you can 
cut it out and still see where you're, especially if you're resizing something by hand. A clear roll is really nice. It's gonna have it to show y'all, but uh, it has disappeared. But for the most part, you can do all of this with pretty basic supplies. Um, I think the only things that I would say are, you know, bigger ticket items that you have to, uh, that would be, you know, if not essential, really good to have. Uh, the only thing I can think of is, you know, heat gun, like, uh, like this one. Uh, but you can get a heat gun for 20 bucks, 30. They're not that expensive. Now, be very careful with that though. It does get very hot, and if you uh, aren't careful, you can give yourself a nasty burn. That's from like a year ago. <laughs> uh, there are other things definitely that make the process easier, but yeah, just for starting out or doing hobby grade uh, hobby uh, type things aren't super necessary right. I'll bring it out in a little bit but um, I have a, a scroll saw that I like to use uh, when I'm especially when I'm doing longer longer cuts and there's all of my patterns for the jaw so we're gonna go ahead and put that aside uh, but yeah uh, Scroll saw is nice to have for, for bigger pieces or uh, for longer cuts. Like, probably grab that out for these long straight, uh, straight cuts. Uh, be, be good for that. Uh, but uh, definitely not necessary. You can do all of that with hand tools. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a couple of good knives. Uh, a knife sharpener is a really good thing to have around. Um, I like to keep you know, a couple of pairs of detail scissors. Uh, like, these little guys uh, and uh, tweezers also especially for small pe uh, small intricate bits I like these reverse grip tweezers because when you let it go it just stays okay so we have our pieces here we're gonna want to uh, transfer these over onto some uh, some foam uh, the easiest way to do that is you know, a lot, of, a lot of people like to you know, tape their patterns down or, uh, you know, whatnot. I, I don't typically, you know, go quite that far. Uh, you can use pattern weights or just you know, marbles like stone, something that you know, holds it in place or something this size. You can just hold it with our fingers. So, grab uh, some foam. sheet but um, so we're gonna use just some of this this is just a, a roll of, um, of white EVA foam they make it in white and black are the two primary colors most often you see it in black I'm just gonna use white today because it'll you know, show up on camera better but it doesn't really matter which one you go with uh, what I'm gonna do is just cut myself a piece here that we can work with uh, might need to cut some more in a minute but uh, I try to try to make sure that I'm you know, not wasting as much as I can. So I'm going to cut this little tab off. And if you have a, a sharp knife, it'll cut right through there just like paper. Now, uh, if it's gone a little dull, which like I said, this uh, this foam will dull these knives very quickly. Uh, you either want to replace the blade or give it a, uh, a couple runs with one of those sharpeners. Uh, but snap blade knives, they're really cheap. Set this aside. I'll, I'll uh, demonstrate the first thing with. I'm just going to use uh, a, like a sharpie kind of thing. Uh, actually, I don't have a bigger. I 
and see how this shows up on camera. Yeah, that should work. All right, yeah, so use a little Sharpie to make your pattern. Uh, one thing too, one thing that's, uh, this, this pattern doesn't have that I wish it did, but it, you know, it's fine, uh, are registration marks. And what those are is just a representation on the pattern of where these two, so this one goes to 8A, so here. Uh, so where these two need to match up to each other. So you can see when you, uh, you know, put them up to each other, they don't quite line up. And that's, that's gonna be the case because these, uh, these are not you know, three-dimensional and the pattern came from something that was uh, 3D. So when you go to put it together, it's useful to know where these points should actually you know, butt up against. Uh, so that, that's another thing where prototyping is good. You can you know, uh, put these together and um, you know, figure out where it, where it all needs to go and go back and you know, cut in registration marks. Some patterns will have those registration marks, the better ones do. Um, a lot of them don't, and that's, you know, it's all right. Uh, but uh, if you have a pattern with registration marks, I like to use uh, this little tool. Uh, this is a uh, pattern notcher. Uh, it's one of those little things that, yeah, anyway. But basically what that one does is kind of like a little hole punch. You just put that in there and it knocks out a little tap. So that when you go through and uh, transfer that onto your pattern, you just make a mark there and you have a corresponding mark on this side uh, so that you know that on your pattern, those two marks will go together when you glue it all together. For right now, we're not gonna worry about that. But so I'm gonna try to get these on here well enough that they don't, I don't uh, waste as much as possible. Um, and these rolled up, uh, rolled up sheets do tend to cause a little trouble. So put these little pliers there to kind of weigh that down a little. And I'm just gonna go around it with my sharpie. Like I said, you can get uh, pattern weights, uh, or there are. Uh, there are things you can buy called 321 blocks. Call them 321 because they are exactly uh, 3 inches by 2 inches by 1 inch. They're a really good uh, measurement reference. Uh, but they also are fairly weighty. So when you put them on your pattern, it just holds everything in place. making that line and again don't stress if it's not completely perfect it's fine so we're gonna uh, just label this uh, right quick we go um, lower left jaw so we'll say lower left jaw uh, we're also going to uh, mark out this is pattern 8a this goes to 7a 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 and uh, of course you can keep the patterns around to reference if you forget like which went to exactly which thing. But uh, 10 B, 10 B. And then since this one has one of those uh, bevel indicators, I'm just gonna go around the inside here and make myself a second line so I know that this part needs to be beveled. All right. Don't want to uh, overlap uh, the outside line there because we're going to cut that off, but yeah. I'll do that. Uh, I'll set this one aside because we've already done it. Uh, and then um, let's do this one next. Let's see if I have something else I can... There we go. Hammer over that so you can. All right. So that uh, kind of holds that tight there. Yeah. So again, I'm just going to try to get uh, yeah, tucked up there pretty nice so that uh, I'm not wasting material. 
PVA is not expensive, especially compared to a lot of other uh, crafting materials, but you don't want to waste money or, or material where you don't have to. In fact, with that, I prefer to keep a, ba a box of scraps. So when I cut this off, uh, cut out these patterns, I'm going to take the scrap material and set it aside. So it might come in handy later. There's my second pattern. I'm going to make my uh, second line there again. Seven, eight. This is the left upper jump. And that's 11, 7B, 8A, 6A, and 8A, 2A. And if you, if you find that you have uh, trouble keeping up with which parts kind of correspond to which, uh, especially if it's all in one color. Uh, sometimes I do, and I like to just switch to a different color so I can just have white. Uh, so my my label, yeah, it's not that pen's not really marking on that too well. But uh, get my multicolored sharpies and you know, have that uh, on there so you have a quick reference by color as well as a shape. Well, I think we can get all these patterns on this one piece. We would be able to, but looking at the time, we got about 20 minutes left. So I am going to just go ahead and cut out these two so we can uh, get that uh, cut out, show how to do some bevels, and um, uh, if we have a little bit of time left over, we'll uh, do the, maybe see if we can do another, another chunk. But I love this hobby. <laughs> Uh, I've gotten really, really into it. Uh, it's kind of amazing what you can make, what other people make out there. Uh-oh, uh burn yourself with a hot glue gun? That definitely can happen. Um, I've done that more times than I can, I can care to count. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, be careful. Uh, the hot glue guns do. Same thing as with, uh, with that. Uh, uh, there we go. I like one of these with the uh, the kickstand. It kind of helps to keep it from. Also, the longer um, uh, the longer trigger there makes it easier to, to press. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's it. If it's if you didn't injure yourself somehow making it, it's not a real first suit. At least <laughs> that's how it goes. And I used to, um, I don't know if, uh, has anybody else heard that, that old, I don't know if it's an old saying or just something I've heard somewhere, but um, that uh, any knife you have isn't yours until it's, you know, got a piece of you. But <laughs> anyway, um, so what I'm going to do to cut this out, uh, the first one I'm going to do with um, this hand tools to show how it's, how it's done. Um, and the second I might pull out the, um, the scroll saw and do that one. Um, but uh, what I'm gonna do really quickly, just to give myself a little less to work with, I'm gonna cut around these two. This makes it a little easier. Set that aside. I'm gonna sharpen it. Now you don't have to be particularly careful with like the angle or anything like that. It's not like honing a, a proper like pocket knife or anything like that. It's it's a razor blade. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> but I want to give it a, a quick sharpen on there so it goes through nice. And I'm going to use this big one for the long cuts. Then I'm going to switch to the little guy for the uh, the the smaller little curves and things. Uh, these these piece, uh, these two pieces are probably fine to use like the bigger knife for all of it, but. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do, kinda hold it more or less like a pencil. Uh, I'm gonna start off at the edge, kinda give it a little sawing motion to get it started, and then I'm just gonna drag it across. I'm gonna let the knife do the work. 
just enough pressure to keep everything in place but if you're too aggressive on it you'll end up with um, cuts that are not level like it'll be you know, and yeah see I didn't quite get through the first time it happens especially when you're you know, making the first cut sometimes you don't quite press down hard enough but it's easy enough to go back and get that through. There we go. You want to try to have the, the blade as close to straight up and down as possible uh, on pieces where you don't want it to be beveled uh, because you'll get a cleaner, straighter cut. Kind of obviously. Um, but uh, with that, it's never going to be 100% perfect. So don't stress if it's a little canted, a little angled. That's the great thing about EVA foam. Once you heat it up and glue it in place, it's very elastic. It moves really well. So, uh, all right, we need to make that beveled. So I'm gonna wait on that cut there. Uh, but it, it, it's very elastic. It moves extremely well. So if you, even if you cut it a little too short, you can kind of pull this stuff and like nudge it out an extra uh, millimeter or two if you uh, if you like cut it just a hair short. Done that plenty of times. Uh, but so what I'm going to do, I've got the uh, the, uh, the bottom edge cut there. Uh, since this part needs to be beveled, I'm going to go ahead and cut these two apart so I'm not fighting the other part of the pattern. And I'm just going to be careful not to cut into there. Pull that apart. I don't need that. All right. Now to do a beveled cut. So I already have this part cut because that didn't need to be beveled. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that off. Get that. Toss that little scrap into my scrap bucket. Uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, this needs to be an inner be um, inner bevel, so it'll kind of go backwards against itself. What I'm gonna do is kind of hold my knife at about a 45 degree angle. And this takes a little bit of practice. So if you don't quite get it the first go, I'm not particularly good at it, to be honest. Um, it kind of hit and miss. But uh, so, yeah, hold it at a 45 degree angle. And this is where you do need to be a little bit careful because if you slip, that knife is pointed straight at your fingers. So we're gonna go slow. I think I got too much knife out, so I'm gonna back that out a little bit. Yeah, I'm not going all the way through. No. Yeah. You get it. There, yeah, it feels better. Get it down through there. Go slow at an angle. Follow our line. And I'm not gonna try to navigate that curve. So cut that off. Saw back and forth a little bit there to get in, and there we go. Uh, didn't quite get through, but there we go. All right, so there we go. We have an inner bevel. So now, when that goes together with this piece, let's see there, right? That's exciting. All right, uh, so that'll go up here. So when that goes together with uh, the other piece, uh, one of the other pieces in our pattern, it will then glue at that angle, at that beveled angle. Now that'll help create the slope of the jaw. Yeah. And to make this a little faster, since we have just a few more minutes, I am gonna cheat a little bit. <laughs> and bring out the big guns. This might. There we go. All right, so this is a uh, this is a scroll saw. Um, actually, let me point it this way. That'll do. That'll do good. All right, 
Let me move my camera so you can see it a little bit better. Oh, so I don't knock everything over in the process. I'm on a little bit of a delay, so if that's not well set up, I'll grab it in a second. All right, so, and this is just a, uh, a scroll saw from Amazon um, from when, uh, not a particularly expensive one, but you don't, for something like this, you don't need a crazy, like, uh, the biggest things that I like about this one uh, is that it has a, a, a bevel table, so you can move this. So right now it's at, you know, just flat 180 degrees, but if I, Turn this knob, I can get it to turn, there we go. Then I can tilt that angle. But for right now, we'll leave it at, we'll leave it flat. Uh, this also, if you were doing a lot, uh, several more cuts, there is a dust uh, chute here. Um, so I just hook that up, I'll put a, um, uh, shop back hose over that uh, to help help collect some of the dust. This stuff does kind of get everywhere. So, um, also, uh, quick reminder that uh, EVA foam is PVC, so you don't really want to be breathing that stuff in. Um, so, a for this part, a particulate mask like uh, this uh, uh, N95 works just fine. When you get into more of the, the gluing, like with the barge, uh, you'll want something that actually is rated for chemical. Uh, but for right now, dust mask fine. So, pop that on. Uh, might see if, uh, not sure if I need to um, mute the microphone or not. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll mute it while I'm doing this. Just adjusting the uh, the gate here so it kind of holds the piece down a little too high. You don't want it so tight that it won't move, but a little bit of balancing it. Okay, I think that's good. Uh, you don't want to like have so much resistance so you have to force it because then you get injured, um, or you're more likely to get injured, I suppose. Want well enough that it's going to help keep things in place. It's being stubborn right now. Okay, that man's good. All right, start it back up. back on there we go 
Alright, uh, so I got that, uh, got the edges cut out, kind of buggered up there a little bit, but again, if we had a time to go back and dremel it, I'd just uh, even that out. Um, no big deal. So what I'm going to do right quick is adjust my bed to 45 degrees. I need to raise the gate. And it's helpfully marked on the table there what the uh, the angle is. Uh, with this, you can't really have the gate down uh, to do the angle, uh, so we just kind of have to be careful again. <laughs> um, but. I guess I forgot to mute. Anyway. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So, with that, you have your uh, beveled angle. Not the cleanest one I've ever done. Uh, might need to go back and practice with this guy <laughs> some more. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's a good way to do more. Uh, quickly once you kind of get the hang of using it um, obviously as with any power saw you got to be really 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 careful because it is not forgiving but uh, good tool to have we're gonna go ahead and unplug that and move that out of the way uh, looks like we're right at the end here uh, so probably don't have time to Actually, we have just enough time to demonstrate a little bit of gluing. Um, so let's do that. Uh, I, for, uh, for gluing, I like to use uh, barge cement. This is my, you know, a can like this is uh, a little on the expensive side. This was, I think like 30, 40 bucks, uh, but that'll last a long time. Uh, there are other things out there like weld wood cement, things like that, but, uh, I, I don't like to use, I, I've tried a uh, hot wire cutter. Um, I don't like to use it on, it's really great for uh, like styrofoam, really works well for that. Uh, the EVA I think is too thick. I guess if, I, I have seen some people use them and use them well, maybe they know some trick that I don't, uh, but uh, no. Uh, the, the EVA, I tried it once and I had more trouble with the EVA melting. Um, plus, like I said, EVA is, is PVC. It's, um, well, it's similar. Either way, it's toxic when it burns. So you gotta be real careful with that stuff. Um, if you uh, if you inhale the fumes on this, it, it, yeah, if you're in a well-ventilated room and not like doing a lot of it, it's probably yeah, not the worst thing, but definitely not something to try. <laughs> not something to seek out. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, I like the scroll saw just because it is, especially a scroll saw that has an adjustable speed. I was running it a little slow because I didn't want to, um, have the cameras, um, I didn't want to have the camera start shaking because I, I tried that earlier and it was getting the video feed crazy. Um, but having the, the scroll saw turned up faster cuts through a little better, actually. Um, but anyway, like I said, if you don't have the, the money or the time or the space 
Like uh, having space for something like that is, is, a, is a trick. Um, something like a hand blade like this, this will work just fine for anything really. Uh, but let's uh, really quickly, um, and it'll be the last thing we do today, demonstrate a little bit of gluing because um, uh, working with EVA uh, with uh, contact cement is a little different. And some people, uh, one thing, one mistake people make with uh, contact cement that I see a lot is not giving it enough time. And what I mean by that is that uh, with, uh, uh, with contact cement, it's a little counterintuitive. You put the glue on, you wanna do a, a thin but consistent layer, and then you wanna wait until it dries. Not completely, you don't wanna let it go for too long, but usually about five minutes at minimum. Um, but once it no longer looks shiny and it uh, isn't sticky to the touch, then you want to actually stick things together. Then it will actually adhere properly. If you do it too soon, uh, it can, and there's certain situations where you have to, uh, like if you need to move something around, but if you wait until the right time to put things together, they will stick immediately. Uh, there's no, no lag time there. Uh, but so what we're going to do right quick, and again, uh, barge is pretty nasty stuff as far as chemical fumes. I'm going to, oh, oh, I don't like glasses. All right, I'm going to put on this guy. If you can get one of these respirators from uh, this guy, from Harbor Freight, they're not that expensive. Um, and, you know, if you have a well ventilated room um, with uh, you know, fans or whatnot going, you may not even need this, but, you know, this is a nice, a nice good precaution to have. Uh, but, and you'll know if it's you got a good seal, if it's kind of hard to breathe through. <laughs> anyway, oh, and I'm not going to put them on, but it's, it is a good idea to have. Um, Gloves. <laughs> if I can get the can open, they may be ending here. <laughs> but we have just a few more minutes. Um, yeah, uh, I might. I might. Uh, I might just have to wrap this up because I don't have my. Uh, I don't have a pair of pliers big enough to uh, get this. Sometimes, if you don't open the can. And along with that, like the glue inside kind of dries up a little bit, and it gets a stock. I just have to get a pair of pliers or vice grips to open that up. But can't get that open, and we are about out of time anyway. So we're gonna call it here. But basically, uh, basically what you would do, there is a brush that comes in the can there. I just use that. Some people like to use like a scrap bit of foam or something else, but I just use the, uh, the brush that's in the can. You put a just a thin layer, thin but consistent layer on the part that you want to glue, and then uh, give it five minutes until it no longer looks shiny. Stick things together, voila! Uh, it is an instant bond. Uh, so soon, if it if it's dried properly, rather, if it's dried properly. Once you stick it together, it will it'll bond pretty much instantly. Have just a just a fraction of a second there. Yeah, uh, you just have a very short window to uh, like pull it back apart if it's not in the right place. Uh, once it is fully set, uh, within usually about 20 minutes at most, uh, it will be stronger than the foam around it. You would you would rip the foam before you'd rip that uh, that contact cement. Um, but that's about all our time. Um, if, uh, if there are any quick questions in the chat. Uh, uh, if anybody has any questions in the chat, we can uh, answer that right quick, and uh, that'll be it for us. Uh, let me know if you would be interested in seeing more of these kinds of streams in the future. Um, obviously, we didn't get through everything I wanted to do, uh, but uh, we got a good, uh, good basis, I think. All right. Well, yeah, I think that is about all our time. Uh, so unless there are any um, any quick questions, I think we'll just uh, say goodbye. <laughs> uh, oh, thanks. Uh, 
yeah. Uh, I think I would like to um, you know, keep working on this, uh, take this through the whole way. So maybe I'll uh, post in the um, in the Telegram chat that um, you know if I'm if I'm going to be planning on working on this a bit more, and we can we can keep working on it. Uh, if anybody out there wants to try it, uh, oh thank you. Uh, if anybody out there wants to try uh, to do this uh, alongside or has any questions about how to uh, work on things like this, um, hit me up anytime. Uh, otherwise, I will go ahead and sign off and um, hope you all are having a great weekend. Bye.